All right, everybody, thanks for watching Gandy Grows. Today I'm going to review a fixture for Veg. This is the FOS F1V. It's about 440 watts. Um, it's pretty rigidly made, pretty strong made, old school style of configuration where you have the central chassis, six bars, and I'll flip it over in just a minute. We'll look at the optics. But at the top, I did want to point out this is a used fixture. So I can see in here, you know, these types of heat sinks have always been problematic. And there's dust in here. And it looks like water would drain or solvent would drain if you were trying to clean these out. But these do become dust collectors and can be points of um, contamination if they're not serviced or clean very well. This fixture is a high voltage fixture. It's geared for 277 to 480. So they have a low range and high range for low voltage and high voltage. This is on the higher side coming out of a commercial facility. Um, another thing to note about the chassis is that these central chassis having these central mounting points right here can make it tough to hang and balance if you're going into a rack configuration or trying to hang on a ceiling if you were actually gonna do that with these uh, the daisy chain ability is only for the controller, so you can run the controller wires in fixture to fixture. You cannot run the line voltage through. The controller does have a Amphenol or LLT style connector on it with a three pin, so it can be dimmed zero to 10 volt. You just have to splice that and put it into a normal uh, building management system controller. One thing to note on this fixture in particular is the spectrum, which I'll show up here on the screen is white chips only. There are no red chips. So being in veg, that is definitely going to give a very compact growth habit, having that amount of blue. However, I think having a little more red or far red, red are what we call cheap photons. I mean, they're easy to produce, lower energy than blue. And to balance out the rate of growth, I would definitely like to see more red in this spectrum. And the amount of far red, which would be beneficial in veg to get better leaf expansion and better, more efficient uh, vegetative growth is missing on this spectrum. There's a little bit on the tail end of it, but it's not very uh, pronounced. So compared to their flowering fixtures, which I think have too much far red, this one has little to none. So now we're gonna flip this fixture over and um, take a look at the optics. FOS has this, um, we call them secondary optics. Rather than having a directional pattern with like a silicone blob put right onto the chips or components like there are with a lot of reds and high powered chips, these fixtures have um, a little bubble over them and underneath there is seven diodes in a little cluster. Again, no red chips, only white chips. You know, I think this is a good value engineered fixture. I do like the way that this is set in here and I do really appreciate component protection. I preach on that a lot. However, the lack of red is just a, a miss here, um, in my opinion. And the secondary optics, the jury's still out. In a higher mounting height situation, I do think that there is some value to having a secondary optic, especially in smaller rooms where you really need to push that light onto the canopy. But we know well now that canopy penetration or diffusion is actually better from more diffuse fixtures. So again, we'll test this fixture watt for watt against a couple of different crops here in the rack in the coming weeks. But I did want to point that out. Overall, the fixture is very solid, um, very rigid. So if you do get it mounted even, it's going to stay well in its place. So um, the last thing to note is we're actually going to send this fixture in. I know that there are about 9,000 hours on this fixture. So we're going to look at the initial product rating on the DLC and in their specification sheets. Then we're going to test it at 9,000 hours and see where it lands as far as uh, operating efficiency over time. My suspicion is that with these tightly clustered chips running at this kind of current, albeit this is the lower wattage fixture um, out of their product portfolio. So these chips should last a lot longer, but we'll see what the rate of decay has been over time. 
All right, if you have any questions, let me know and look for the test results here in a couple weeks. We're learning now that we're in the second, third generation of LED fixtures, understanding the light output degradation. Over time, you know, a lot of the fixtures are marketed and sold to have a 90% maintenance where they only lose 10% of their lighting output at 100,000 hours, when the reality is it could be much less than that. That would be 11 years on a 12 hour cycle. But you could see, and we have seen now in some first and second and even current generation of LED fixtures where the light is out is down to 50 to 60% from 100% in only two years. And the only way to really know that is to test the fixtures, um, and a lot of warranties don't even cover that. So be careful what you're sourcing, be careful what you're understanding from the salesperson, and then also document your usage of your fixtures over time so that if you do have an issue, the first question is how many hours have these fixtures been running? Make sure you can prove that. It's really important when determining a lighting strategy or a transitional strategy from high pressure sodium to LED to make sure that you understand you know, the quality of the hardware that you're hanging up, the light degradation curve of the LED, and then also make sure that you're relamping your high pressure sodium on the proper Interval. intervals Interval. to make sure that you're getting the right production out of that product. When you're figuring out your lighting strategy, whether if you're gonna be transitioning from HPS over to LED, building a new facility and just running LED, you need to understand the light output and degradation of the fixtures that you're purchasing via HPS or LED or a combination thereof. So what we're doing now is the Relamp and Relax program. If you need new high pressure sodium lamps, they're harder to source. So we can help you source them and recycle your old ones without ever missing a beat on your high pressure sodium. Make sure you're running the most sustainable program with HPS that you can. And also if you have LEDs that have been running for a few years, we can take those in, test them, and provide a report to you to understand where your point of diminishing returns is and where you're going to need to relamp before you see it on the bottom line of your yield report. So if you have any questions about this or other lighting applications or CEA, Controlled Environmental Ag in general, please feel free to reach out and I'll do my best to answer it. Thanks for watching.